Hello everyone and welcome to the video and today we're going to be talking about a full guide on how to use the wingman specifically on console or controller if you're controller on PC but as a lot of you guys may know um, wingman on console is just a little bit weird sometimes you feel like your shots should be hitting and they're just not uh, and I'm just going to help you out a little bit with that because I do feel like I'm pretty good with the wingman I really like the wingman. I've been using it a lot lately And uh, I just figured I'd make this guide because I know a lot of people want to use the wingman uh, But they just really can't seem to f be as effective with it as they want to be or as effective with it as they could be with other guns uh, So the wingman is obviously a very very high skill skill gap weapon uh, It has a high skill ceiling if you can use it very well It's going to do a lot of damage and it's going to be very consistent But if you are not using it properly or uh, not as consistent with it You're just going to see lackluster performance and you're really not going to be impressed with it And in this video, I'm just here to help you out a little bit uh, With what you should be using on it how you should be using it on console so the first thing I want to talk about is the optics because this is a very very important part um, and one thing that actually has a big effect on the optics is the pay to win skins for the wingman so uh, I believe it's the merciless wing and the death ray those are the two skins that have a very very nice iron sight and um, I'll get to why that's important in a minute but this iron sight is a lot less bulky and it has a nice little red dot so it makes it a lot easier to aim with uh, as opposed to the other wingman skin so if you guys have the leftover crafting materials or you know you just want to buy it because you want to use the wingman a lot or if you already have it just use those skins because they are much better than the other ones so the reason why this is very important is because the iron sights on the wingman actually give you extra aim assist so I believe this was a patch they did a long time ago where a couple guns got uh, better aim assist or better um, hit registration while using the iron sight as opposed to using a scope or an optic so the wingman was one of them and you could really tell you know when you have the iron sights on the wingman specifically the pay to win ones uh, you can really really feel your shots connecting a lot better and the only drawback to the iron sight is the lack of range you know you lose out on a little bit of range but the hit registration is a lot better and it feels like the aim assist is better as well so uh, definitely if you guys are not already using the, the iron sights on it, I would always run the iron sights unless I have one specific optic. So essentially I run two different optics on the wingman and it is the iron sight and the 1x HCOG classic. So the HCOG Classic is just the red dot, as a lot of you may know, and this one is very good for precision downrange. However, you lose a little bit of that extra aim assist or the hit registration buff. Uh, so that's a little unfortunate, but you get a little bit more accuracy downrange and a little bit more precision because it's a clearer sight. So I would very, very, very highly recommend that you avoid using sights like the Hollow or uh, the Digital Threat. Or even the two times I see some people run the two times and if, if you really want to get that extra range on the wingman you can run the two times because that's not a bad sight but I would advise against using anything other than the HCOG classic and if you don't have anything just run the iron sight because the iron sight is amazing so that's my best tip for the like actual optics for the wingman and that's very important uh, some of you guys may think that well that's only a small part but that actually has a very large factor in hitting your shots with the wingman because the red dot is so precise that it is all up to you and the iron sight gives you um, better hit registration or aim assist. So the next thing I want to talk about is how you're going to be using it downrange. So the wingman is going to take a lot of uh, a lot of bullet lead so you're going to need to lead your bullets a lot uh, and it has a good amount of bullet drop as well so you just want to be aware of that you don't want to just be like if you're aiming at somebody and you're over 100 meters away from them or like 75 meters plus and you're aiming directly at them you're going to miss most of your shots so you're going to want to be leading your shots um, in the gameplay I have I, I was leading my shots a little bit on some of the players and that's important to realize uh, that you need to be doing that and accounting for bullet drop if it's over like 150 meters you just want to be aware of that so one thing I want to mention about this gameplay is that it's nothing special, uh, but I did use the wingman in, in a pred lobby, and I think I ended up getting like 2600 damage, which is a good amount of damage, so I figured I'd post it. Um, but the next thing I want to talk about is using the wingman close range. So this is where a lot of people struggle, and you know, it's understandable why people struggle. It's because the wingman can be very inconsistent close range, and it takes a lot of um, accuracy to be able to hit your shots, especially on a controller where you can't just flick onto people. Uh, very easily so the best thing I want to mention about close range fight with the wingman is you want to aim center of mass so when you're close range you're actually going to benefit a lot more while aiming center of mass because any shot that's hit is going to be very beneficial to you 
Uh, and this is just because you could be missing a lot, and that 45 damage is a lot, especially when you're hitting them consistently. So if you can just hit those body shots consistently, the headshots close range are not going to be as valuable because they're going to be harder to hit. And when you're in that do or die situation, when you're face to face with somebody, you're really going to need the consistent damage to be able to survive. Uh, in the gameplay I have here, I was like one shot and a wraith pushed up to me and granted the kid, you know, he didn't have amazing accuracy, but I was able to connect four straight wingman shots and kill him instantly. So that just shows you that aiming for the body and going for the consistent shots close range is going to help you out a lot. Uh, and one thing to note about the close range gunplay with the wingman is I would avoid uh, the hip fire. The hip fire is a little bit dangerous and it's most of the time it's not going to, it's, it's like a 50-50 shot. So um you can you can uh hip fire with it but i would advise to just aim in when you're close range and just kind of try to get those center of mass body shots or you could even try to line up the headshots but it's just a lot more dangerous and you have to be a lot more skilled to be able to do that so the next thing i want to talk about is the general guidelines for using the wingman and where to be aiming so the wingman is a weapon especially with the skull piercer that benefits a lot from headshots so um, in any sort of combat, you know, medium to long range, you're going to want to be aiming for the head. Uh, you're going to see a lot more results when you aim for the head. Uh, most of the time, the bullet drop will give you a body shot anyway, even if you miss. Uh, so aiming for the head, it's like an 80-some damage uh, with the skull piercer if they have like a purple helmet or something. Uh, or even 90 something damage it, it does a lot of damage to the head so you're really being rewarded since it could potentially two tap people so you're just going to want to always be aiming for the head with the wingman since it is a precision weapon so now quickly i just want to talk about you know the damage ranges and where the wingman shines because a lot of you could be expecting certain results and when you're not seeing them you might get discouraged uh, and what i mean by this is basically that if you're using the wingman at like long range and i say long range i mean like 150 plus meters uh, it's going to be very difficult to hit your shots. Uh, you're probably going to get discouraged just because, um, you know, you're not going to see many results as, a, as opposed to you using like something like a scout or a hemlock. You'd be seeing a lot more damage numbers at those types of ranges just because they're much more efficient. The wingman mostly shines in medium distance fights, uh, anywhere from like, we'll say 25 to 100 meters. You're going to see the best results with the wingman. Uh, you could see good results with it closer than that, but at that point, I would rather just a volt. Um, and you could see results longer ranges than that, but at that point, I would rather a sniper or a DMR. So you're just going to want to mainly stick to the medium ranges when you're working with the wingman and just expect that you're not going to be hitting uh, as many long range shots as you'd like to. So another aiming tip I have for the wingman is just going to be to aim where they're going to be and not as much where they are. And what I mean by this is sometimes, you know, especially when people are trying to strafe you down in like closer or medium range fights, people are going to be going back and forth and strafing. And if you try to follow them and track them, uh, you're really not going to see as many hits with the wingman. Whereas if you try to just aim at a central location where they're going to strafe into, you can line up headshots pretty easily and you can potentially two tap people. So if you just kind of line up those headshots and aim where people are going to be and then shoot and time it perfectly, you're going to see the best results with the wingman. Um, as well as just, you know, you could aim directly on them if they're moving towards you or if it's like a slow fight where you're using behind cover. But if they're strafing heavily, you're going to want to aim where they're going to be in a central location. And that way you're going to be able to hit and line up those shots a lot easier. So I think that's pretty much it for today's video. That covers pretty much everything I know for the wingman and just tips on how to make it hit a little bit more consistently on console and just how to aim in general with the wingman on console. So that wraps up today's video. I'm going to roll out the gameplay, but thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time. That's hard now. Marking our surroundings. The people are going to try to rotate the, the whole boots. Recharging my shields. Okay. They're fighting on top. Let's go this Snake. way. Use as your guide. Need to recharge my shields. They're not looking at us. We might be able to sneak, sneak one. Yeah, they want to No, 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 no. I need a moment to recharge my shields. I hit Pathfinder for 67. Yeah. Round six. Beginning. I don't want to throw this. 
Yo, watch, watch, watch here. Follow the tunnel. Danger. You grabbed my shit. But I got him. Good <laughs> shit, bro. Oh shit. Nice on lifeline. He's one shot, she's one shot, she's one shot. I'm one shot too though, I'm not gonna I need shoots. Reloading. Hey, I think freeze I think pop's free, they're playing way back. Heads up, we've got an airstrike. He's got ult. This way. We're good here. We might want to focus on this team down here. Hundred on Gibby. Gibby sent me that bubble. Gibby down, Gibby down. Oh, he's going up. We got below, we got below, we're good here. Go back, go back. I need bats. Okay, I got you, I got you. I can drop you too. I'm just diving, man. We need to go, we need to go, no, we need to go. Good oh. shit, boys. We took out the kill leader. Good choice. That kidnap was clutch.